And the podcast will begin in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, it's an honor, it's a privilege to have her on the podcast. And we're excited to learn about her story. Kayo rin. How about a big round of applause here, live at Paco's Place, Minerva Veer. Come on! Thank you. Salamat. How are you? I am great. You know what's so nice about um, the virtuality of the world nowadays? You see a person, not in person. You have information scattered all over the internet. You try to get a perspective of who the person is and you finally meet the person. And now the excitement is how much of what I've read is who she is. Did you, ever, did you ever experience something like that? Yes. I mean, all the time. You know, I, I have a lot of role models and inspirations. Mm. And, and you know, you know them from afar. Like Jessica Hagedorn, you know, do you know who she is? Filipino? Yeah. Uh, is, she from, is she from Palawan? No. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I've read yeah. all her books. Mm. And so I had this idea of who she is because right. she's my idol, you right. know. And then finally, I get to meet her, you know. And you're like, oh, she's just <laughs> a human being. Yes. She gets embarrassed. Right. She, you know, she's like, she's so normal. Larger than life before you meet them. But the, the beauty is larger than life before you meet them. Even larger after you meet them. Yes. Because of their humanity. Exactly. Diba? Yeah. That like, they're actually real people. You uh -huh. know, I've also met the other way around. Like somebody you think is so awesome right. and then you meet them and you're just like, oh, you're kind of an asshole. Like clue. Ugh. Disappointment. Clue. Filipino bata? Huh? Um Oop. Uh no no. No. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I've met a Filipino. So, yeah, let, let, I mean, we have all the time in the world. It, uh, that's fine. Um, all the Filipinos that I met, that I looked up to, like celebrities that I've met, they all were like, like very positive. You know, like I'm like, oh, like I loved your songs when I was a little girl. I used to sing all your songs, and you're just, you know, like. And they're, they're humble. Human. And, uh, yeah. And humble. Yeah. And you even love. Love them more. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, you grew up also in the Philippines? I did. Mm -hmm. Sa Cebu City. Cebu, uh, sa city mismo? Oo. Okay. And then, um, in high school, I spent a couple of years sa uh, Minglanilia, which is a very rural That's a rural area. part of uh, Cebu. Yeah. I've been to Cebu a couple of times. Okay. Been to Mandawe, Cebu City, Lapu-Lapu. Okay. And uh, I was there for 2019's Sinulog Festival. Oh, nice. How How is the Sinulog these it days? It was good, but, oh my God, the only thing my wife and I went to, Cebuchon. <laughs> Cebulechon, uh, that's it. Oh, good. Voila, we, were, we weren't able to really go around because it was really traffic. Packs. Packed. Yeah. But the friendliness of the city, of the people. Right? When was the last time you were there? Oh, my God. I, uh, 2010. What's your favorite hangout in Cebu? Sa mga, nakik na mga, sa mga Cebuano <laughs> namin na nakikinig. Mga Bisaya. Sa Bisaya. Eh, since it's nighttime, it's, how do you say it? Maayong gabi sa inyo tanan? Oh, Maayong gabi sa inyong tanan. Maayong gabi sa inyong tanan. There you go. That's very good. Thanks. Yeah. That's all I know. <laughs> okay. Okay, what, where, what's your hangout place? Um, There's so many different places now, but when I was growing up there, um... There was the Ayala Center was the big one. It was, and it was actually, new. It was new yes. when I was in high school. Yes. Yeah, it was really new and it was like, oh my God, it's like a big mall. Yes. Um, but before that, when I was a little girl, there was really not Nothing. much. Mm -hmm. There was there was Roostans. Yeah, oh my God. There was there was Roostans and there was Fountainhead across the street and Jollibee and Brute. <laughs> Brutus Fountain and or uh, Bru wait Orange Brutus oh, yeah Orange Brutus yeah I yes. know that place yeah yes um, and that was it no that was it simple life this was in the nineties eighties 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 
Oh. <laughs> and tapos yung mga gitara. That's where I got my first guitar, by the way, from Cebu. Oh. When my dad well, would go to... Kasi yung mga, yung mga paggawa ng gitara sa Cebu, the guitars there are actually the, the better local ones. Yeah. Sorry, Santa Mesa, Manila, but uh, I'd rather get a Cebu guitar than than the one from oh, Manila. Oh, really? Yeah. So my dad would bring home either a guitar or otap. <laughs> Okay, yeah. That's a Cebu special thing. Yes, yes. Otap. Otap. Then, oh my God, and then the Cebu chon, oh, to die for. Yeah. Um, 2010, who's in the Philippines still? Who's in Cebu? Oh God. Um, you know, my mama who raised me, mm -hmm. my mama Gloria, she passed away last year. I'm sorry to hear this. And I didn't get to go. Wait, when, of, when you say, you, oh, you didn't get to go? I didn't get to go. A oh. couple of different reasons. Oh, do tell. Because, okay, Mama Gloria is not your mom. Uh, because no. Because you said raised you. Yes. Um, she was one of my two foster moms. Foster moms. Yes. I'm just pretending not to know. I actually know this story. <laughs> <laughs> but, but... How do you know this well, story? Uh, is, it, is it online? I don't think so. I don't think so. But maybe a bird flew over the cuckoo's nest and... Oh. Kind of told me, or I don't know. Okay. But we'll okay. we'll see how we'll see how accurate the story. So far, so good. Yeah, yeah. So my okay. mama Gloria is one of the two foster my two my parents. foster parents. But in the Philippines, they don't really call you foster parents. They just ended up raising me. You have you had two moms aside from your moms biological mom and a biological mom. You're smiling though. I, I want to hear the story. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a woman named Victoria Benedicto. That's your mom. Victoria yeah. Benedicto is your mom. Okay. Yes. Um, she, she was married. She had five kids. They're full Filipinos. Her husband was murdered. Ooh. Uh, or it was a seaman, like a captain yeah. of a ship yeah. that went to China and blah, blah, blah. And, and it was like this big thing. And mm. so my brothers and sisters, my older brothers and sisters got, um, you know, they lost their dad like at a really young age. So they you're were, the youngest. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the youngest. Uh -huh. um, and, and so my mom became a widow at 27. That, that was young. Yeah, with five kids. That was so young. Yes. How old was she when she dated? Did you ever ask your mom how old she was when she dated? When she started dating? She was like, she married her first husband at 18. Oh, okay lang. Alam mo naman sa Pilipinas, yeah. you know? Yeah. They, they, they do it fast. Ako, maaga din ako lumande. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 18 is fine. Akala ko naman 14, 15, no, 18 is fine. Yeah, but she, like, she, I think she lied. Like she told really? her first husband when when they dated that she was older. Um, that she was older. That she was eighteen when she was actually fifteen. Wow. Yeah. I would lie the other way around. <laughs> I would tell them I was younger. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Right. Diba? Oh oh. Sila pa old. Okay. That's but she fine. wanted to do it fast. Yes. You know? She yes. Was like, yes. Yeah. My mom's from Negros. And oh, Bisaya, Bisaya, uh, ano, Il Ilongo. Bisaya. Bisaya ba Negros? Oh, it's a Dumaguete side. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did she go to Siliman University? No, but um, my, my mom actually went to college in Cebu. Okay. But Siliman University, like, she lived by there, so Okay, so you know of, the place, yeah. Yeah, sa Dumaguete, di ba? Grabe, been around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're the, and then your mom met your dad? My mom met my dad. My, my dad, you know, as an expat. Um, He's not Filipino? No, my dad is white mm. from Michigan, French-Irish uh -huh. descent. Um, my dad was really old and kind of retired in the Philippines. My dad was in his 60s. And your mom was in your 20s? 20s or? Yeah. My mom, I think they met when she was around 30. My okay. mom had me when she was 33. Wow. And my dad was in his late 60s when he had me. How, so how, how long did you have your dad for? Not long. Um, my my dad actually lived a very long time, <laughs> like uh, till 80, 88, yata. Um, nice. Yeah. Okay, so they had you, and then. 
And then, um, you know, my mom wanted to come to the States and bring her five kids, and that's exactly... But there are six of you. Um, okay, so this is an interesting story. <laughs> so um, so my mom actually brought all, all my brothers and sisters before I was even conceived um, to the States. I think they were in Guam or Los Angeles, I can't quite remember. But um, so my mom was in the process of divorcing my dad. They were together for nine years. And Had no kids. Um, no kids, but my mom was like, <laughs> you should meet my mom. She's, she's hilarious. She, you guys would be here for hours. She's still around, so I could say hi, mom, right? Yes, she's still mommy hi. Vicky. Hi, mommy Vicky. <laughs> okay. She will watch this. She will watch this, and she will call all her friends in the Philippines. Good. And so I, I have to say this, mommy Vicky, hot tamale. Ah, <laughs> she really is. Naughty, naughty. Okay. <laughs> she right. really is. Um, okay. So my Before, mom, yeah. so my mom before, like she was, you know, like they weren't doing well or whatever. And she was like, well, before I, you know, leave this man, I, I need a, I need a blue blood child. <laughs> souvenir. I need a souvenir. She wanted a daughter or a child with a long nose. Okay. Yeah. She was like, Yeah. <laughs> So basically, she had me. Akala ko naman, <clears throat> akala ko naman you were a makeup baby. Di ba? Away bate, away bate, and then pag nagbate, oh, lovey-dovey, and then... Maybe, okay. maybe. I don't know exactly how it happened. Napaka-awkward to ask, no? But my mom is really malan... Ma uh, <laughs> I was gonna say malande, but is, that's not a, an accurate description. My mom is very sweet, you know. You know, she's like very Filipina, very passionate. And my yung, yung daddy ko naman is the opposite. He's so white and so so stiff. Stiff. Mm. You know, he was also in the military for yeah, a long yeah. time, so you know. So my, all he did was grunt. Mm. Mm. Yes, and he was old. Mm. Yeah. Oh you know, God. and my mom was young. Yes, like yes, yes. So my. Um, so my mom was like, you know, she would tell me stories like, you know, I was very sweet. I didn't want to divorce your dad. Like, I would, you know, I would be so sweet to him. I would be so sweet to him. And all I want is to, is to put his arms around me. Yes. And, um, and he wouldn't. <laughs> you know, but you know, that's true. No, I hope, I hope men, if you're listening, pick up on what Minerva just said about what mommy Vicky wanted. Because... I learned that the hard way. You know, when my wife is feeling bad or whatever, mm -hmm. nowadays I just shut up and just put my arms around her and... Shh. Exactly. It's that simple. simple. But you know what I've noticed? Because I, you know, I've been dating a lot because I'm divorced. Um, You're not wasting time. I, I, no, oh. no, no, I'm not dating a lot. Sorry, that okay. sounded weird. Like, no, that's I'm fine. not a dater. I actually hate dating. Oh, wait, anyway, wait. Before you go on, do you swipe left or right? Or do you actually go physically? I don't do. I can't do good, online good dating. Good for you. Good for you. I gave it a good college try. I can't mm. do it. Okay, good. You know? Okay, so divorce, now dating. Okay, go. So what? Um, so with that, I'm, I'm very much like my mom. Okay. You know, like I'm Bacchus. Do you know what yeah. Bacchus is? I'm, I'm so Bacchus. I'm like strong-willed. I'm very independent. Yeah. I can do anything that I set my mind to. But also, I'm a Filipino woman. Conservative. I'm, there's a certain Maria Clara. You want, you want to be, you want to be swooned. You want to be... Yes. Courted, you know. Dude, you're an, you're an what happened to mm. bringing flowers? Yes. Sending flowers to your house? Yes. Come on. Yes. What? <clears throat> That's a lost art. I'm an easy woman. You send flowers to my house? Okay, we're on. Yes. And guys just don't do that these days anymore. Michael and I, Michael Abad, shout out. He's our uh, artist relations. So, coming dalawa, we're married. Si JJ is divorced. Kaya nagko-compare notes kami palagi and ang sakit namin ni Michael before is we couldn't understand the whole flower thing until finally we just, and then JJ said, just buy them flowers. Simple as that. You don't have to understand what flowers are all about, but girls do. 
just give them the damn flowers. Exactly. Yeah. You know, just, and even if you don't feel like saying I'm sorry, just say I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, it's that simple. I agree. Dudes. I agree. Okay, so mommy Vicky and your dad fighting a lot. You became the souvenir. I became the souvenir. So anong nangyari noon? She, my mom, you know, a newly single mother of five kids. Wait, she ended up divorcing your dad also? Yes. Before you came out? Before I came out. Wow. Ano nga ba? It was like last minute. I need to have, you know, a child parang, na may matalos parang, na ibong. Parang tinignan, eh, no? parang ganito. Positive, you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know, Mom. I, she'll be watching this. So okay, <laughs> next guest. Next guest is uh, Victoria. Vicky Victoria Benedicto. Mm, okay. Oh, she'll be so excited. She'll cry on your show. She'll put a hole. That's why I'm an actress because of my mom. Really? Yes. Wait, but you said you were raised by. Yes, I. She did not. She did not raise me. Um, so what happened was, she. Uh, she. Went back to Cebu. With your siblings or just her? Just her. Okay. Um, I think the plan was to give birth to me and um, Get- mom, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is how I remember this. Um, uh, she went back to Cebu to give birth to me in the hospital where, where, where she worked as a, um, as midwife, a midwife. Yeah. And, um, Cebu doctors, but? Uh? Hindi. Uh, Chongwa Hospital. Chongwa, okay. I don't know if you know Chongwa. I, I, it's probably still there. Okay. But it's a Chinese hospital. And um, my mama Gloria and my mommy Linda, my foster parents, worked there. My mommy Linda was a doctor, an OBGYN, and my mama Gloria yeah. was a midwife. Midwife, okay. So, um, and they were living together. Um, and Living together as... They were together. They were a couple, okay. but they were not out about it right. because it's the Philippines I in know. the in the 1980s. Even though you know how Filipino culture is. Pero ang galeng, no? You 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 have front seat to what LGBT is all about. Yes. Which is we'll talk about yeah, that later. Yeah, yeah. I was, I'm a child of you know sex, right? sex parents. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so you so they took you in they took me in oh basically anong nangyari was yes. that um, my mom basically said i need to figure out what i'm going to do with this child because i think she planned to leave me with my grandmother sanegros but then my grandmother wasn't feeling well and it didn't work out na you know i i couldn't live with her family sanegros because it w- wasn't like a good yeah. i don't know exactly the details um oh, but yeah. wow. so she left me merong um ward Sa Chongwa Hospital, merong ward because the thing I guess like in the late seventies and early eighties was that a lot of mothers um, just left their kids would just leave their kids. Uh huh. Um, so they had a, a a ward to leave kids, and then the kids if they don't get um, if the the parents or the mother doesn't come back. They get adopted. They get adopted. And if they if they if they aren't adopted until the age of two, they get put to sleep. Is that what? <laughs> well, close. Real? Close. Because oh <laughs> that's what they do to dogs, right? Dogs go into shelters. If they don't get adopted, they get put to sleep. No way. No, they, no, 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 no. It's not. Hindi naman ganyan. I don't know exactly, but basically, when they they would keep the the kids. The toddlers until they're two. Wow! And then, and then, if they can't locate the parents, then their kids would be given up for adoption. You were one of those kids. I was one of those kids. However, I was luckier because I actually they actually knew who my real mom was. Oh, okay. So my mom basically said, "You know, I, I let me figure out my life." Fair in, enough, right? In Los Angeles, and then and then I'll come back and get my daughter. But long story short, she no, could, yeah, no, no, long story okay. short. Long story is, it was dark, in the. <laughs> See, descriptive na tayo, descriptive writing na tayo. Okay, go. August. It was uh, late August. Oh, I do have a funny story uh, about my mom. Yeah, I mean... So my mom, you know, because we had this whole thing. So she basically left me in the hospital um, 
uh, from birth yeah. until my mom and my mommy picked me up um, when I was two and a half years old. So, um, so basically, we had, you know, I had mother issues. I've written plays about my mom, like, you know, like mother issues. But now me and my mommy, Vicky, have an amazing relationship. I Amen. love you, mommy. Amen. Um, Galeng, no? Yeah. But, you know, it was, it was a struggle uh, for, for a long time. But basically... That big question mark, why? Diba? Alam mo yung... Yeah. Why? Um, or WTF, why the fuck? Yeah. You know, but... Um, at this point in my life, like I didn't understand her motivations and she explained to me many times why she did that. And I couldn't really like, I couldn't really um, understand because I was like, a child needs her, her mom. Mom. Actually parents. Yes. Not just the mom. Exactly. But if I can't have two, then at least give me one. Yeah. And, you know, like, at least a mom to breastfeed, right? breast milk, yeah. you know, all that stuff, right? Yeah. And so I was, I had a, I was carrying a resentment towards my mom for a very long time. How long? Past your 20s? Um, past my 20s. I think I started, well, we didn't talk from when I was 22 to... 31 or 32. Oh my God. A good, te a good 10 years, no? One yeah. decade halos. Yeah. We didn't talk. Um, and, uh, well, I'll tell you more about that. Yeah. But I'll complete my story about my childhood, how yeah. I ended up, you know, with two yes. moms growing yes. up. So, so she basically left me sa Chongwa Hospital in, in this ward. And she said, I'll be right back. I'm just going to try to figure out my papers and do that. You know, don't give my child up for adoption because I'm her mom and I'll come right back for her. I'll be right back meant like uh, in a week, two weeks. Right. right. But she came back um, oh. when I was four and a half. Traffic. Oh, maraming traffic. <laughs> My God. Oh, oh. Um, four you know, and a half. Yeah, I was, I was four and a half. She actually went back to the Philippines with my dad. And okay. my dad stayed. My dad loved the Philippines. Like he was, so he stayed in the Philippines? Yes. Your mom went back to the States? Yeah. Uh, okay. No, no, no. no not, not during birth. No, but, no, no. Yeah, yeah. But, but after. Yeah. After. Yeah. yeah. But when I was growing up, my... Um, I was living in Cebu, and my dad was living in Tagaytay when I was a toddler kid. kid. Yeah, when I was in elementary school. Did you have any communication with your dad? Yeah, but my dad's, you know, very aloof, oh. like I mentioned. Yes. So, um, yeah, my dad was a very strange white person. Did he have other kids? Not that I know of. Mm, okay. Um, wow. But me and my mom suspect there. There are. There some. are. I don't know. Who who knows? You know. Um, wow, no. But you grew up with two wonderful women who yes, raised you. Yes. I want to know that story. Was that a good part of your life? Yeah, it was a great part of my life. I mean, you know, it was very normal. We had a house, um, and you were the you were their only child. At uh, until I was eleven, and then. They officially adopted. I was not officially right. adopted by them. Right. Um, I had, uh, they officially adopted, or my mommy Linda, the doctor, officially adopted another girl, uh, Maris, my sister. She's actually Hi, in Cebu. She's still in, in And you Cebu. guys are close. Um, not that close. It's hard, you know, because mm. I'm here. And right. um, so we, we actually separated when I was when when she was two um and I was 13 um I loved her when when they adopted her she was a super cute baby um funny thing is we actually kind of looked alike she's also a mestiza she didn't really know she was she was actually left in the hospital but she didn't know who her real parents oh. were um and, and, you know, I loved her until I was two. And then my mama and my mommy had this, you know, very dramatic breakup when I was 13 years old. Both so, of them? Yeah, they had a big, they were together for 25 years. And oh then they God. had this blowout breakup, you know, um, where Maris was taken by my mommy, Linda, 
and and uh, brought to Cagayandi or they moved to Cagayandi or that's where my mom Linda is originally from and um, and I moved with my mama Gloria to Minglanilia her the rural hometown. part yeah 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 um, so, so both of them left the city basically yeah we left Cebu City and um, that was a very interesting part of my life when you say interesting medyo sad interesting happy interesting or numb interesting um, all, all of them, all of them. I, I think it wasn't <clears throat> happy. I was a very troubled teenager. <laughs> wow. Anyway, we'll continue. We'll be back. Medyo, we're getting into the, the weeds of the nervous story. <laughs> but we'll be back after a short break from our sponsor. Okay, and we're back with Miss Minerva Veer. Okay, when we left for the <laughs> when we I'm left on the hot seat <laughs> when we left for the break, we were talking about interesting, and I was asking if it was kind of sad, interesting, happy, interesting, or numb, interesting that that you and your mommy Gloria left, and um, your sister and your mommy. Yeah, um, it w- it was very sad. Interesting. It kind of defined. It defined. Um, and I you were twelve, thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah, they started fighting like when I was twelve, um, and finally, you know, did this whole separation um, around when I was thirteen. I can't exactly remember the date. I mean, you're an adolescent. This is the part where you're developing into a woman. Hmm. And uh, you had questions about your childhood. The next chapter of your life starts with another. Okay, I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Yeah, like my adolescence started with that. Like it was. Um, mm. it, it it was really interesting because I was. Um, so I came here when I was twelve. I actually uh, visited. Visited my mom and my older brothers and sisters here to L.A. So your mom was in communication with your mommy, Gloria? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, they were, they were, I was in communication with my mom, too. She mm. would call a lot. She would send cards. She would right. send money. Right. You know how it is with Filipino moms now, abroad. Now, you're, but, okay. Because, um, like, my wife is kind of the same. She grew up with her nanny in the Philippines mm-hmm. until she was 10. And then after 10, that, that's when she grew up with her real mom. So I go, how do you feel toward your nanny? And she's like, she's like my mom. Yeah, that's exactly how I felt. Okay. Yeah, so All my right. mama Gloria, you know, she was definitely, she, she was there um, during my formative, formative years. Formative years, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so you and your real mom would communicate. And then finally, what, what was the straw that actually broke the camel's back in making you fly to the states well they they it was a very dramatic um breakup so there was a lot of tvs flying and oh. you know yeah. just um now witness mo lahat to. you saw all of this yeah it wasn't it wasn't you know like, it wasn't amicable it was yeah it was very dramatic uh-huh. you know how we do it in the yeah. philippines yeah um so I was just trauma, like, you know, for a 12 year old, of course. I was sort of traumatized. So I told my mom, my real mom, and mommy Vicky, and she was like, Magbisita na lang din hiday, you know, two Come months, over, spend yeah. the summer. Um, and then so I came and I, I got here and she showed me like Universal Studios. That was, that was your first trip, right? First trip. Yeah. But you've always kept uh, a blue passport. Uh, yes. Um, I was always an American citizen. Right. Interesting, though. But she gave, she went to the Philippines to give birth to you. Other people, other Filipinos go to the States to give birth to their kids. Shanaman Baliktad. She went to the Philippines to give birth to you. Yeah. I think she, she just thought that I would be better cared for yeah, in the Philippines because, you know, like Filipino culture, yeah. you have your family. It's yes. like a village. And then the extended family and the extension but an extension of the family and yeah. all that stuff. Okay, so. And she was right. Yeah. Yeah. Because here, had, you you know, you're on your own. Mm, Each family's on your own, yep, you know? Yeah. So okay. you came here, Universal Studios and all that and stuff. Then, and then, you know, it. American food. And oh it was God. so 
like I gained a couple, you know, I'm 12. So I gained a couple of, of um, pounds, right? And then... Because you're eating for three people now. Yes. And the, the portions. portions here are so big. And I was like, you know, I was such a, like, I was like, there's ketchup on the table. There's uh-huh. sugar. They give yeah. you honey at Starbucks. I, there wasn't Starbucks. Jelly is time. free. Yes, exactly. So I was like, I would put it in my purse. Yes. <laughs> um, so, you know, I gained weight. And I was like first year high school in an all-girl Catholic school in, in the Cebu. Philippines. In, okay, in Cebu. Um, St. Teresa's. Shout out Shout to out. all my Theresians. Some of my done. Okay. Um, and, uh, so you were just here for the summer. Yes, actually, my mom wanted me to to go to school here. Okay, you know, because I'm an American citizen. She's yeah. like, "What do you want? Why, yes. why do you want to go back? Yes. to the Philippines for, you know?" And I was, uh, um, and I tried one week of school here, but I was crying every single day that my right. mom was like, "We have to send her back. We can't. We can't have her like crying, kicking and screaming." Who's, who's we? Did your mom remarry? Um, yes, she okay. did. She married an Egyptian man. Um, so you met your, would we call him stepdad? My stepdad. You met him. He was oh, very yeah. sweet. Nice, yeah, nice. Yeah, they, they, that was my mom. And that was an oasis, right? At least finally someone's sweet. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my mom's, uh, the love of her life. There you go. And it was so, they were so sweet because they had, they both had, such thick accents. My mom had such a, you know, very Filipino accent. And and Uncle Isat, I called him Uncle Isat, had a very, like, strong Egyptian accent. And they would communicate, and I can't understand. They were both speaking English, but I can't really understand what, what's happening. But you were, just, um, you were just entertained. You were like, oh, hey, this is fun. Yeah, but he was a sweet guy. He, he brought her roses. There you he go. He put his arms around her, you yeah. know, like... I mean, that's all we really want. Yes. Like, I don't care about money or anything right. else. I can do that myself, right. you yeah, know? Yeah. But, like, just come on. Love like, and affection. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. Now, you were living, now your mom and your uncle Isad was um, still with your brothers and sisters in yeah. the house? Yeah. Well, um, we kind of separated a little bit. Like, my sister Mary Joy had her own place. We were all in LA. Um, but my, here you were new environment meeting your siblings for the first time not really kind of first time yeah 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 the parang, oh my god para kang um ugly duckling na lumaki into a swan na hindi mo alam kung sino talaga yung mga kauri mo now you're finally coming into terms of, okay this is my pack yeah this yeah this is my brood and then what what was the feeling like um, it was, it, it was very strange because like all my life, I always felt alienated. Um, I was going to say, you know, cause I'm like a white girl, like, you know, and everybody, I had like hair that was stringy and would get sunburnt, mm, yeah. you know, while everybody, all the girls in the Philippines had long black raven yes, hair yes, yes. and I was so jealous of that. Um, I was a very, Interesting. yeah, I was so, I did not feel comfortable in my own skin, you know, cause I didn't belong. And then, so my brothers and sisters are all Filipinos and they're, they're sort of a generation ahead, ahead yeah. of me cause they're yeah. much older than yeah. me. Um, and so they had their, you know, their, they had their barcadas. They like, had their own click. Kumbaga, parang, I, again, kahit ka mag-anak mo to, you were still looking for your identity still, no? Yeah, I was, you know, I was young when I moved, when I finally moved to the States. Because you went back here, right? I went yeah. back and I finished high school. And then I moved here basically to go to college at 15. Because, you know, in the Philippines, we don't yeah. have junior high. Well, so uh, It's like from high school to to college. Oh, oh. But, but before going to college, I want to know, because you were presented a crossroad at 13 to stay and yet, you're probably, uh, is it your love for your mommy, Gloria, that made you want to go back? Is it because you felt not the breakup? I mean, your, your sister, your, your sisters with your other mom. And then, mag-isa lang to. That's so generous of you, Minerva. You're a really good interviewer. You're so thorough. And you find like the little 
things, you know, like you don't skate over anything. You're like, oh, totally, yeah. Um, is it? But no, but this is an important part because I think I did, my life in the Philippines was not over. I had a, a lot of unfinished, you know, a yeah. lot of unfinished work to do. I, um, the I guess the foremost reason I went back to the Philippines was because I missed my little sister. Diba? Yeah, she was she was a baby. She was only two years old, and um and we got separated. Like right. you know. Yeah. So I wanted to be with my little sister. She was she was a toddler. She was like two something, and yes. I was like thirteen. And um, ang galang no? at thirteen, your 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 maternal instincts were already kicking in, no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm very maternal, even though I don't have kids. But uh, so I went back primarily for that. And then, but she was sort of kidnapped by my mommy, Linda, you know, yeah. whatever. Like, we're not allowed to see her there in Cagayan. Oh, my God. And so it was, it was like, it was like a soap opera. So I had to call my dad, who lived in Tagaytay, and be like, hey, can you open? Can you file a kidnapping case to try to get to try to get my little sister back? Um, and we, we actually went to court. In well, your dad was a willing participant. Yes, naman. we all went to Cagayan de Oro. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I have nothing more to do. I'm retired. Let's go to Cagayan de Oro. Yeah, I mean, you know, we also went to Bukidnon and did the yeah. whole like little yeah. you know trip. Yeah. Um, but but. It, my, I was like, I wouldn't, you know, I'm a very persistent person, and it started when I was really young. Um, I, I was like, Dad, like, you know, you're not with me. Like, you need to do something for me. I'm your only daughter. And so I, this is the only thing I want in my life. I want to get my little sister back, you know, dramatic 13-year-old. Of course. Um, and so he said yes. He financed the whole thing, the court case and everything. It didn't happen, oh, you man. know. It didn't, you know, how the courts in the Philippines but, are. But, you know, I mean, your little sister probably, hopefully, no, and I appreciate Nayon, that you made an effort to keep the bond together. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you were once a toddler, and I. Yeah, goosebumps. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm thinking, at the back of your head, parang did they, did they even fight for me? Did they even? Yeah, yeah. I um, you know what I mean. Like we, we are sort of in the same. You know, yeah. like we were left in the hospital. We lived yes. in that ward. You know, nobody. Like we were abandoned. This seems like a dramatic word, but essentially we were. Right. Um. But I didn't want her to feel like guy. Yeah. she she's not of course worth loving. Mm. You know, yeah. she's a human being. She's a beautiful person, and she is worth fighting for. You know, Maris, I hope you're watching. <laughs> yeah, Maris. Maris, pala yon, Maris. Yeah, I hope you're watching. <laughs> Di ba? Alam mo yon yung tipong iba yun eh. Kung baga ayaw mo ng ipa, that's a that's an ate. Being an ate, ayaw mong maranasan ng kapatid mo kung ano yung naranasan mo. Yes. And I'm still the same way in my life right now in terms of um, trying to help women and children in the Philippines. Like, I'm very active in the human rights um, world for the Philippines, you know, um, because I think it's really important because we have women and children Amen. there that are suffering and I, I, I was one of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I'm cute. I, when I say cute, I'm, I'm downplaying it. But, you know, there's a, there's, there's a big emotional abuse that went on. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it. I mean, when you say it, it, you're just saying suffering. But the reality is I can't imagine. And I'm, I'm like, Wow, you are. It's it's an exceptional thing the way you smile now, but and but then again, there's a big context behind that smile. There's a big understanding behind that smile. It probably took a lot to get to the smile, or probably when you were younger, the smile was outside, but deep inside, people 
if you only knew what was going on inside yeah, my life. Parang yeah, ganon. that's 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 uh, that's the story of my life. You know, like I was a, I I always have I a good happy friend. I'm always like a very chipper, you know, yeah. person. I do comedy. Um, so this goes back to. I think what I was trying to say when I was 13 years old, when I went back to the Philippines. So I was eating a lot here in the States. Right. And then I went back to the Philippines. And one of my girlfriends at SDC was like, Uy, nitambok man ka. Yun na, lumaki ka na. Yeah. Mm. And that just spiraled me into anorexia. Of course. Imagine mo, you're getting into your skin. Things are developing in your body. Mm-hmm. You're trying to build your confidence, which in the beginning was already hard to do because of your situation. And one of your, but it's not like a stranger lang ang sabi, but someone in your group. Yeah, you know, and you're 13. You're so sensitive to like your friends, yeah. you know, and cr- criticisms, and and also I was, I yes. was modeling at that age, right. um, for a pen shop. Yes. And then that year that I was modeling for them, I had such a, I started out plump, you know, <laughs> like, and then towards the end, I was so emaci- emaciated. Of course, talagang you're conscious ka eh. Yeah. And instead of becoming so confident, naging, right? Yeah, I look at pictures at that time, I can't even look at it because I, I didn't eat. I went to the doctor every Friday because they had to weigh me because, you know, I was getting down to 76 pounds what for a 14 year old girl i was so skinny i didn't i didn't develop and they were so worried that i was gonna remain like a little girl yeah yeah you know because those are the developmental yes stage of a woman and and i right before i would go to the doctor because they would weigh me Mm -hmm. i would eat a lot. Para na lang hindi ka pagalitan ng doctor. <laughs> oh, so like at least the weight, you know, yeah. uh, um, what do you call it? Yung scale. Yung scale would like budge, but uh-huh. it didn't really budge. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, uh, I, I had, I struggled with anorexia when I was a teenager. Grabe. And my hair was falling off, you know, and it was a lot because it, it was, you know, it was for my sadness and just the trauma of, you know, losing what I knew was was my family. Yes. Yeah. 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 Bigat, no? Like. Uh oh. Now, being being raised by two women, how was the outlook outwards? Like, my parent teacher, my parents teachers uh, meeting, mga ganon ganon. One parent would go, both parents would go. Um. It was always like usually my mama would go because she was more like the hands on. Mama is Mama Gloria. Mama Li- Gloria, not your mommy Linda. No. Yeah, my mama Gloria, but my mama Linda went to like, you know, they all they all knew that I I had two moms. Right. You know, but you know, like when you're. You don't you don't just talk about it, right? There's there's knowledge, but we don't talk. Yeah, about we don't it. talk yeah, about okay. it. Um. You had questions? No. I mean, you had questions with regard to mm, mm, mom and mom. Okay, what's going on here? I it, it was just kind of like a knowledge that I had from the get go. I don't remember being weird about it or anything. Right. You know, it was just like they're they're my two moms. They're raising me, and I knew that it was non traditional, and my family life was different. You know, from my friends. Um, but it didn't really become a thing for me until like when you're a teenager and your friends would be like, so do you sneak into your, you know, mama and mommy's bedrooms? Wait, what do you see? Like, you know. Yeah, curiosity. Stupid, you want. like, yeah, yeah, teenager yeah. Yeah. things. So I didn't like have a consciousness about it until I was a teenager. Mm. And um, yeah, but I was very like, I didn't. I didn't date so much. I wasn't into boys at all. Like I was very like, I went to an all girl school. I had no idea what uh, the male species was like. No idea, you know, like um, until I came to the States and I went to, you know, co-ed, co-ed university. So, so, so I, 
is I know your mommy Linda was part of the reason why and your and Maurice was part of the reason why you had to go back to the Philippines. I was gonna ask, may boyfriend was sa Philippines at that time. Thirteen to thirteen to fifteen, eh, diba? Oh, you know, it was it was cute. <laughs> <laughs> It was cute. I had little boyfriends. Um, Me with my fling. Yeah, I had little <laughs> flings, you know, but I was very protected. Like, I was a very sheltered girl. Okay. So I went out on, like, you know, lunchtime, like, dates, like, you know, a boy from Sacred Heart High School. Right. Um, around the corner would come and pick me at the gate from SCC and would take me to Rustan's or Fountainhead because that's right. all you yeah, had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe Tops the banon wala pa. Was Tops around? Oh, Tops was around. Um, I was going to ask, did you guys hang out at Tops? And we all had prom at Tops. <clears throat> you did? Yes. Was it rotating when you guys... Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, it, it was a crazy night. It was like we were... Oh, that, it was like a memorable night. Anyway, okay. So I had Sorry. little, I had little boyfriends, but they were always like we didn't have cell phones back then, and so my, stationary writing. So stationary. Yeah, you, you would know, leave you like letters at yeah. gate. It's a gate, yeah. It's a gate, you know, and um, and it was so hard. My mama was very strict. strict. How strict? Define strict. Because nowadays the kids don't know what strict means when it comes to that, eh, diba? No. Yeah, she wouldn't, like, she cut off our telephone. No. Yeah, because apparently I would, <laughs> I gave my phone number to, like, one. One guy? One, one guy. Yeah. Um, and he would call all the time? And he would call, and my mama would be so angry. Like, she's just, like, oh my, she was so strict. She, so, she cut off our phone line. So, I had to go and sneak to my aunt's my mama lily's oh. house down the street to use her telephone wow and then i would sometimes like there would be you know like a boy that would be interested um and they would be like uh like can i get a phone number and like we have to schedule a time like i couldn't even get there sometimes and they'd be like <laughs> and then yeah it was <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> um uh yeah and you go, were, huh? it was impossible i was kept on such a short lease it, leash it was impossible like when my mama and so i was so good i was so good i didn't want to break my mama's heart you know so i came i came here right and then i went back um a couple of years later and then of course like i was already i think i was it, it was it was my first year of grad school Grad, grad school? Wait, wait, wait. Not, not even college? Not even cal college. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, before you continue with that, one short break. We'll be back. We'll be back after this. Because ito na yung tool sa mga boys, pero nasa grad school. I rewind lang natin sa okay. minor sa sandali. Pag-usapan natin yan when we come back. And we're back with Miss Minerva Veer. Pag-usapan natin. Dinala niya kagad tayo sa grad school. Eh, paano na yung... Little boys at papano na yung co-ed college. So, pag-usapan muna natin yun. Okay. <laughs> so, um, strict si Mami Linda. Mama, Li ah, si Mama, Mama Gloria, Gloria ang strict on. Yeah. Ikaw naman, yung konsensya mo parang, you know what? Wag na nga lang. Wag na nga lang kasi, you know, I don't wanna <clears throat> make my mama So, no angry. kiss nung high school? Meron. Ayun na. Yeah. Um... Ryan and Reyes was my first kiss. Ryan Reyes, if you're watching, <laughs> sh share the video. <laughs> Pero ito, Signs from murals. <laughs> okay. Talaga si Ryan yeah. Reyes. Okay. Si Ryan Reyes, was he an athlete? Was he part of the pep squad? What was he? Um, he was from San Carlos, boys. Okay. Hi. Ah. But he was just so cute. I just remember him being so cute back then. Um, so you guys were MUMU, -MU, parang ganon. Oh. 
Um, may, mga, may mga tulay-tulay pa kayo, right? May mga bridge na, oh, sabi mo kay Ryan, ganyan-ganyan. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, you, know, you know how Because that's is. your social media, right? Your, your, your social media was your friend to tell the other friend or... Oh, makita rin sa gate ng ganto ganyan, ganyan. Yeah, and I remember yung, yung intramurals was a big deal because yep. I, you know, all girls school. Yeah. So when when you had to, yung intramurals, like you, you had to play another school, yeah, all girl, all boys school mm. or whatever, then you would be so excited. You would go there and you would look for your crush and you'd be like, oh my God, he's there, he's there. <laughs> like it's so... And that was it. Um... He, yeah. he, was, he, you were his crush. He was your crush. Parang ganon. Yes, and then that kind of went away because it's impossible to get together. And then there were a couple of other ones, you know. Um, wow. Yeah, it never really w- happened. Now, now at the back of your mind, you're like, okay, this is this is a new thing for me because you were growing up, eh, di ba? You were growing up. Yung yung loyalty mo sa parents mo were there, and you were going through a crisis. But something good was happening here. Did that push you to go, you know, what? I'm going to high school. Na to, tapos I'm out of here. I'm going to States. Yes. Ah. Yes. So it added to that. Yeah, definitely. Parang, you know, what? I'm going to And then, time for me to be me. I know. I, I, so I, there's this, um, <clears throat> I have this story. So I had a big crush on this dude from IS named Jason De La Cruz. Take note, guys. Kanina little Little, little I don't know where he Kanina is. Kanina little where he guys. Is. <laughs> Kanina little guys. Ngayon, this dude. Okay? So, um, naiiba na ang description. Okay, go. So, we, he, he was also in pen shop. And there was a... But he was in my love team. Like, I was... Kasi ang pen shop is batches. Eh, by batch yan. Oh, eh, diba? And then, he was partnered up with Indira, who is also a friend hmm. of mine. And I was partnered up with um, Chuck Sihuko. Okay. Who I also liked. Um, Did you know anybody from Davao who was part of the whole pen shop thing? What's the name? Mga, uh, last name is Sauler or uh, no no no, yeah, uh, was it no? Sauner, Sauner, sa 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 uner, Sauner. I don't remember. Okay. I it doesn't it doesn't ring a bell, but I was like the the second group. The okay, second no batch. no, they are sila eight batch eight sila. Okay. okay okay. So you know like and then the I. Like a few days before I had to come to the States, he called me up at my mama Lily's phone oh, and asked me to go to his prom with him. And I was like, no, I'm leaving for the States in three days. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What was the decision? Wow. But you like the guy also? Yes. So you were like- I liked him and I was hoping he would invite me to his prom or what well you know it was kind of he was he like did. one of those unreachable guys that i it was unexpected right you know but i didn't think he would but um it was kind of a dream come true but not a diamond crossroads no you know that was another crossroad right imagine had you done that what would your life have been yeah so i look you- at my friends in the philippines they're all married with kids they have like three five kids wow yeah Wow, so you th- three yeah. days, no, no kids, no, no. You've never, you've been, you've been married. I have. Oh, okay, we'll get there. Yeah, <laughs> I could understand why it's like it takes four hours to we'll, begin this. We'll get there. Probably, telenovela. probably on this disc, we'll get there. <laughs> so, okay, now you left for the states, leaving the Philippines behind. What was going on through your head? Is it? My bags are packed. I'm ready to go. Or let me leave some of my stuff there because I'm coming back. What was your mindset? Um, I was leaving for good. Um, I I didn't I didn't want to come back. You know, like it was it was sad. Like I, you know, it was sad because I didn't really have a complete family anymore. Like um, I really wanted a fresh start. Mm. Um. And so I knew I was going to come back and visit my mama um, and my friends and family members and, you know, but I, I was like, I'm, yeah. you know, I didn't, I, I was ready to, to leave. You start a new chapter, you know? Yeah. And also because I had, I never really related to the very traditional, like, 
family, get a job, have a nice life. <laughs> like I'm, I'm such an artist, you know, I like adventure. Um, and I didn't, I didn't feel like I belonged in that life. I still don't like, I, I like still, that. yeah, no, I'm, I'm probably going to be single for the rest of my life. <laughs> Mm. I I'm just like a free free bird. Mm, may ganun, you know? Maybe after this, pag pinanood ka nila, maybe oh, Maybe if somebody say. sends I, me right? flowers. <laughs> But how'd you say bye to your dad? Uh, Did you say bye to your dad? Do you remember saying bye to your dad? <laughs> I don't you know? remember saying bye to my dad. Um There's a lot of things, like the sad things I kind of blocked out, yeah. you know. I remember my last conversation with my mommy, Linda, was, I don't ever want to see you for the rest of my life. I, I don't ever want to talk to you for the rest of my life. When she passed in 2013, um, it hit me like really hard because those were my last words to her you know, said by a 13-year-old that just didn't understand the situation at that time. But, um, yeah, so I remember that. I don't remember my dad. Um, my dad eventually moved to San Diego, to Chula Vista, um, because he, he had to come back because of his health. Right. Um, he had to, you know, so he passed away here. there. Yeah. yeah, here in the States, and we saw him before he... Oh, that's good. Passed. Pero si Maris, um, when your mommy Linda passed away, did she go back to your mommy? Gloria? Mama, Gloria, Mama Gloria. They they tried to reconnect, and this is an interesting story. Um, my see, Maris actually found me on Facebook. We we lost touch, you know. I didn't know where she was or what was happening in her life. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. And then I got an email from somebody named Sarah Miles. Oh. Um, and I was like, Who Sarah the heck? Miles. And then <laughs> she says, I'm your sister. My name is actually um, Maris Loren. Because that's, you know. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so crazy. But uh, Sarah Miles, she works in a call center. You know how, like. Yes, <laughs> they change your name. They cha yeah. they anglicize their yes. name. Yes. So they, yes. so you, you know how it goes. Um, so, yeah, she found me on Facebook. And. and How was that? It, it was very emotional for me. Because, you know, I, she's, like, I didn't know who she was and she looked for me and um, we, we Skyped. We Skyped and she was asking me questions. She was like, if we are sisters, why are you there and I'm here? And, and I had to, like, tell her, you know, I was like, because... We don't have the same parents. What's weird, though, we look kind of alike. Yeah. yeah we look like sisters. Yes. Um, and and I was like, well, my, you know, I'm an American citizen. My parents are American citizens. Um, and and I just felt so much pain telling her that because she didn't know who her real right. parents were. She knew, like, she... She had a, a contact for her mom because when we had that whole debacle where yeah. we were trying to get custody of, of her, her yeah. um, we located her real mom. But so she she tried to contact her real mom, and her real mom wouldn't talk to her. They want to have anything to do with her anymore. No, and she you know she has a different journey I than know, I right? did, um, and she had it harder than me. You know, all I did was come to the States with my real parents and my reset. American. Yes, reset button, right? Uh, siya walang ganun. Walang ganun. And she was a teenage mom. Um, I think she was like 16, 17. Um, wow. You know, and my mommy, Linda, actually went to went to the States too. And she was left with her, my mommy, Linda's relatives. And she was kind of not, you know, she, she, she grew up with relatives. Yeah. Which weren't even her real relatives, but it doesn't right, matter. Right, but yeah. so she kind of, she became a teenage mom. She had two kids before she was 20, um, you know, and 
it, she had a harder path right. than I did, and I had to break it to her. It made me feel so bad. I was like, but you're still my sister, and, and I love you, and don't ever think like, you know, you're, you're less than, than. You just have a different journey. So it must me. have been hard on you also, because like, miles apart, Wala ka magawa. Mm-hmm. And she had a lot of questions. Yeah. Did she did she finally know that you fought for her when she was two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I went back in 2010. Um, How was that like reconnecting with her in 2010? It was very nice. It was very nice. Um, and then since 2010, you guys have now a good relationship. Both yeah. Of you. It's, it's hard to you know, connect, but we still message each other on yeah. social quite yes, a bit. We yes. follow each other and comment. Sisters and, for life. Yeah, sisters for life. Diba? Y- yeah. Sometimes yun lang yun, you know? Yung, yeah. yung tipong, tipong ganon. So there's that, and that kept you grounded sa Philippines, but you had to spread your wings and fly over here. Mm-hmm. Right? So you went to school. Where did you go to school? I went to Loyola Marymount <clears throat> University. Wow. Yeah. Taking up? Uh, f- filmmaking was my major. Mm-hmm. Um, screenwriting was my emphasis. Why? Why those courses? Why that? Why not management? Why not <clears throat> pol- poli sci? <laughs> why filmmaking? Um, I loved movies, you know, and. I think it was such an escape. I loved American movies a lot. And my dad actually, whenever he would come and visit me, or he spent some a, a few months with me and my mama, Gloria, when we moved back to Minglanilia when mm-hmm. I was in high school. And he would just sit there all day long. He was an old man and watch movies and would educate me on, like I watched a bunch of Woody Allen movies. Yeah. Um, you know, I would watch like, tapes of like American history, world history, <laughs> like boring, right. boring movies. And, um, and I, I, I even loved Filipino movies growing up, you know, like as a teenager, I mean, it was always these, these love stories. Don Zulueta, Richard Gomez. Yes. Oh right? my God, I had a picture of uh, Richard Gomez in my... <laughs> in your wallet? In my wallet. Because you can buy them, right? <laughs> yeah, you can buy them outside school. Yes. In yes. the gate. And then you can put it in your wallet. Yes. Yeah. And then yung mga wallet pa natin may mga plastic sa loob na pwedeng pasukan oh, ng Oh, and then you would the picture. open it yeah. and you would be like, oh, Richard ah, yeah, yeah. Gomez. And... <laughs> I still follow him on Instagram to this day. Nice guy, no? I haven't met him in person. No, but through his Instagram, like yeah. you see that yeah, he's, he's giving back. Right. Mm-hmm. And he's kind of like, you know, kind of family man. Yeah, yeah. Such a family man. Mm-hmm. Yes. So but, Yeah, okay. So you'd watch those films. Yeah, I like the, you know, I, I like that. But also... What I noticed about Philippine cinema at that time, it's probably different now, was that the stories had very similar plotline. <laughs> plot line and uh-huh. and formula. Yes. And and it worked and that's what people went to go th- Yeah. That's what three sold. part yeah, three part art do right? Yeah, and the, and you didn't go to the cinema for for the story yeah, or to you no. know, but you went there to see your idols, right? Um, yeah, so I appreciated that, but I I also liked American movies, and and I always had a thing for weird like different things, you know. I was such a um. Like, I, I watched Peter Jackson's first film. Like, I was such a film, like, weird film buff, even, you know, at that time. Um, did they have, dito sa college, did they have, did they have to make you watch um, old films and review them? Parang ganon? In, at LMU? Yeah. Yes. Like, yes. Um, ano ba mga, mga pinanood? Uh, would, A Streetcar Named Desire would probably be yes. there. Yes. Battleship Potemkin, do you ever? Yes, I, we, we saw that in American film yeah. history class. Yeah, diba? Yeah. Battleship Potemkin. That's so ba? funny, you know that. That's like kind of like super old school. Right? 
Uh, we watch a couple of yung body snap, yung body snatchers with Andrew uh, McCart- oh, ma- who's in McCarthy. Who's McCarthy? Na is it right? In the Indian bagu. Eh. Um, we watch Sydney Lumet. You know, like the American landmark filmmakers. Yon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Hitchcock. Now, yes. You know the different genres. We learn like, all see, about the different. Like Hitchcock yeah. would would film to a click track, right? Yeah. Para at least yung tempo ng kanya mga movies are always the same and all that. Yeah, yeah. He was really good with rhythm and how mm-hmm. he developed um, suspense. Yep. Yeah. And, yep. Now, why why did you emphasize on screenwriting? Why that? So uh, now we know that okay, filmmaking because you're a, you're a film buff and you like you, you like that world, but but early on was it a subliminal um, decision because at the back of your head, parang I have a story to tell and one day I'm gonna tell this. Yes. Was it that? Oh. Okay. Yeah. It was definitely that. Um, <clears throat> I knew I was a storyteller. And with what I have experienced at an early age, um, I wanted to create those stories that affected me very deeply. I wanted to create something out of it, you know? Yes. Um, And to tell those stories, um, the, because like there, and also, I wanted to tell something, make movies and plays. I eventually wrote more for the theater. Now I'm going back to screenwriting and filmmaking more now. But for a long time there, um, I, I went to grad school for theater. Okay. Where um, where did you go for grad school? I went to the actor's studio at the In New York. school. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, and then I got See, caught by the acting bug. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. It's actor's studio. Who's, who's, that, who's that guy that... Our Dean, Dean Lipton, James Lipton, yeah. Who talks um, this way? Yes. Yes. What's your favorite word? Right. What's your favorite curse word? That's how he talks, right? Yeah. So you went there? Yes. First year, what did you do? Um, first year was all, it's, it's, the actor studio is based in the, the method, mm. which is, a very controversial acting style, but I firmly believe in it. Christian Bale, get on. Yeah, so method acting is basically you dig deep into, you try to be as close to the the character's Character. life as possible. You try to build their inner life, what's their backstory. Right, their subtext, yeah. And you adapt their mm-hmm. um, physical mannerisms, and you really learn and there's two techniques that that you do that with and one is sense memory and emotional memory so we did first year we didn't even we didn't even act first the whole entire first year it was the three-year master's program the first year all we did was sense memory and emotional memory so you had to be we had to be. We had right. to had had all these imagination exercises right. of like you know you're in a cold room in the middle of winter in New York City, but you have to imagine you're in right. the Philippines. It's summertime and it's 150 degrees and you're sweating, you know. And you have to get to a place where you actually really internalize that and you believe that. Mm-hmm. So it was a yeah, lot man, of no? exercises to do that, um, and. Yeah, Grabe. so so we didn't. Yeah, we didn't at- attack any text work. You know, we're, uh, um, the text was secondary. Primary was subtext. What's your inner life? You know, we'll talk about that now. Subtext, because thank God at that early age, someone told me what that how important a subtext was. So I'd like you to share that with us. We'll be back after this. Those guys behind the cameras are sweating bullets. So, pagbigyan na natin sila. We'll be back with Miss Minerva Veer. And we're back. Yun na. Miss Minerva Veer. <laughs> Before the break, we were talking about subtext. We were talking about how to internalize and going back method acting. Why is it controversial? Before we go into subtext and all that. The reason why I'm saying subtext is important because you don't need to be an actor. 
in order to apply that to your life. Yeah. Fake it till you make it. Yeah. Diba? And and let's talk about method acting because that is something that can that can move you forward in life, whether you're an actor or not. Agree, disagree. Yes. Um, I think it's it's about mindfulness. Diba? Um, and we could all use a little bit of that Thank as you. human beings. Right? You know, yeah, like just being present in the moment. Um, really, you know, uh, processing yeah. your feelings and that yeah. kind of stuff is... I think if we did that, you know, if it's, it's everybody not, did that, no? Yeah, we would have less therapies. We would have less, you know, like. Away. Yeah. Because the way I see it, and again, between between me and you, Ikawang, you went through this, right? I've gone through this, but I did this in life. It's not enough to think of putting it's not enough to think of putting yourself in the other person's shoes ang tingin ko sa method acting is being in those shoes right it's about being right yeah not 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 it's not sympathizing it's actually more than empathizing with right right with em- empathizing and i think a big thing also is not judging the character. Yes, because you are the character. Right. It's like, okay, ito medyo meta na ang dating, di ba? <laughs> if you are portraying a character, then it's still not you. Tama ba ako? Right. But if you are the character, then it's no longer a character, then it is you, even for a certain period of time. Right. Um... And that's where the controversy comes. Talk about that. Because, uh, you know, there's there's so many different schools of acting. Um, I think the people who, you know, who oppose method acting, they think it's dangerous because to lose yourself into a character, um, they think it's dangerous, you know, for your psychology or whatever but you have to have a balance Mm -hmm. i mean you still know that you're you as a human being but in the time that you're acting that you're doing that work you put yourself back there right and you become the character in service of the story right because how can you tell a good story you know that was intended by the writer um, if you're going to do it from your own perspective, you know, your, you know, my, uh, my perspective is different from a character's perspective. Right. You know, what they think is different from mine. Right. So if you're playing like a villain, like a murderer or mm. something, right? Yeah. I'm not a murderer in real life. I would never murder a human being or anything. Um, But I will try to do as best as I can to understand the psychology of that character. So psychology is really a big part of it, yeah. Right. You can't say... Because if you're if you're going, if you're not putting the subtext in, that's where subtext comes in, eh, right? Right. Like, uh, again, let's talk murder. The psychology of that, how old were you when you were abused? Mm-hmm. Who abused you? Right. What were you feeling while you were abused? And this is not you. This is your character. But now, it's now you. Nagugula na siguro yung audience natin because lumalalim. Yeah, yeah. Lumalalim. <laughs> but am I? Am I? Am I? Yeah. On and, track in understanding how. Yeah, okay. and people think that it's dangerous because you can you lose yourself. If you're playing a murderer, mm-hmm. they think that you, if you're a method actor, you can lose yourself and you're just going to go around the streets and murdering people. That's not the case. That's a misinformation. Um, you know, that's a myth. Right. Uh, it's not the case. Like, you have to have balance. You know, you. you 
you keep it in the boundaries of the art. You don't walk around in real life carrying yes. your character with yes. you. You, when you walk on set, you do your character, um, and then you leave the set and you become yourself again. You put the character behind you, right? Right. And then, pagtapos na, you throw it away or you isoli mo na tapos na. Right. Now you're a writer also. Mm-hmm. And seeing these characters come, your characters come to life. How would you rather have them come come to life by someone putting his spin on your character or someone going into the character and being the character and why? Of course, the latter. Okay. <laughs> Cuz you know, that's my background and that's what I believe in. But I believe in truths. Like you, you know, as a writer and as an actor, I um I'm a storyteller first and foremost, whether as an actor or, or, or as a writer. So um, if I'm the writer and somebody else is playing a character that I wrote, I want us to talk, you know, communicate, ask questions um, yeah. for each other. Like, like I would ask that actor and be like, how's your take on this character? What do you mm-hmm. see? What, what's their relationship with their with his parents you know like and then he could come up with that and he could i could fill in the blanks we could communicate right, and actually right. build um a fuller life you know for the, this character for this yeah so um at the actor's studio we did we did the sense memory and the emotional memory for all the tracks there were wow there was an acting track and there was there were writers and there were directors but we all had to do all the the exercises the sense memory and um emotional memory exercises the same you know so they can create their work from that basis also and i also i work with method actors because uh, um because you want work We're we're the same tribe, you know what I mean? Yeah, come on, same philosophy, same everything. Yeah. Have you tried being? Have you tried pulling out a method um, acting shtick on someone you were dating? <laughs> Diva. Is it? Is it? That's a really good question. I'm really. I, I think I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> um, so take your time. So I can go there really to I I can be manipulative. I don't choose to be manipulative these days anymore. Uh-huh. But in my younger years, I used it a lot <laughs> to bail. Yes, to get out of trouble. Uh. I can. Cry on! <laughs> I can cry on cue. Um, I have a funny story. I, I, yeah, I, you know, I was, I'm a girl who loves trouble, so I always got into trouble in my younger years. <laughs> um, and um, one time, like, this is I. I actually did this recently. I just remembered. <laughs> Um, but I'll tell you this other story first. So, you know, I, I was doing a show at the Kirk Douglas Theater in Culver City. Mm. And you know how, like, theater people, I mean, yeah. musicians, rock stars, like, you guys do the same thing, too. Like, you party after yeah. the shows, right? And you drink a lot. and Everything you know. a lot. Uh, right. So, it was one of those nights um, where we were drinking martinis at the Culver Hotel and it was like two o'clock in the morning and I lived in um, the valley in uh, off of Laurel Canyon okay. at that time and and I was so tipsy it was pouring rain and I had to drive through Laurel, Laurel yes. Canyon and it's so windy yeah. and I had the better sense in my you know In every Asian, I had the better sense to be like, I'm going to fall off a cliff on this road if I don't, like, if I continue. So I was like, before I even get... Attempted to yeah, do that. Yeah, so let me just turn around and, like, go 
And then I, I went down, and it was pouring rain. I didn't see a, an island on Santa Monica Boulevard and Crescent Heights. I didn't see an island. So I basically, my car just Ooh. jumped. It, like, flew <laughs> over this Ooh. island. And, like, my two front wheels just went... Of course. And... Um, and so, it was, so it was a scene. It was a scene in the middle of the night. I was right. wasted. And then Oh my god, that was like a DUI in the waiting. Yeah. And and I already had two DUIs by that point, by the what? way. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm sober for ten years oh, now. <laughs> um, but uh so I actually there was a meter close by. I pushed my damn car by myself in the pouring rain in the middle of the night. I was like I tried to push it as close to the uh, curb as possible. And then, and then I, I, I guess a cop saw me get into my car and I see the lights coming oh, behind man. me. And I was soaking wet, <laughs> wasted. I was like, I don't want to go to jail. I have a show the next day. And it was like closing whatever. Right. Closing night. I and mean, this was the weekend? This is the weekend. So it if you went Saturday to jail, night. you'd be out on Monday because you can't, there's no right. bail on the weekend. Yeah. Right. So I was like, I cannot be like, I cannot miss <coughs> closing, right. you know? And uh, it's like, where, uh, where's Monero? <laughs> where's, right. <laughs> where's <laughs> Monero? <laughs> so, um, and I was like, so I opened, like, I got my, it was a flip phone at that time. I got my flip phone. And I was like, ah, ah. I was like hyperventilating, of crying. Course. And the cops like knocks on my window. And I was like, I'm, I'm calling AAA right now. And, I'm, <laughs> and, I, and I need to talk to them. Like, I was so like on full on acting mode. Right. I was like, I cannot go to jail tonight. And he, he, he just stood there waiting for me to stop hysterically <laughs> crying and all of a sudden his phone rang and he had to go somewhere and he was like hang in there i'll be right back i was like fuck i don't know what to do i don't know where to go so i like closed my window i went to the back seat of my car i hid like I hid on the <laughs> on the ground. I curled up in a ball Ooh. on the ground. My car was locked, and luckily I had tinted windows in the back seat. And so, and I just hid there, as, like, so quiet as a mouse. And then he came back, and like. <laughs> so he kept knocking in the rain. Yeah, and then he he just gave up and thought like that I wasn't there, that somebody came and got me or something. But I was there and I was so, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I just like laid there and, you know, I didn't have a vehicle and I slept there like in the backseat of my car. And I took a cab to the theater like the next the day. Holiday, yeah. Luckily the theater had a shower. There you go. <laughs> oh my God. But I, yeah, when cops are involved, tears, man. They just pour. See, at least, <laughs> at least, may napala ang college, ang grad school. <laughs> yes. oh, what was the recent story, man? Huh? What happened recently that um, you had to pull it off again? Is it another cop story or a boy story? Oh my God, I just gave you two, two choices. What if it was neither of them? Well. I think it's a boy story based on the way you look. <laughs> um, sometimes, you know, sometimes I have to say, sometimes, like, I just kind of turn it up a notch, you know, when, when it's necessary. Yes. Um, but also, it's so easy for me to, to, I don't even know if I was acting or using method acting at this time, but I think, I turned it up a notch. Um, I I was in a car accident not too long ago, like a, a month ago. Like somebody Ooh. rear-ended me really badly, um, or, and my car was totaled. I would have turned it up ten times. <laughs> right? But then I remembered 
I remembered that I, I, I was rear-ended back in 2013 when there was Typhoon Haiyan. I remember mm, it. Mm. I remember the date because it was Typhoon Haiyan. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I didn't think anything of it. I was like, you know, we traded information. We didn't call the cops. I And then a couple of days later, I... You felt it. I was seeing double. Like, yeah. I had, like... Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't drive for two weeks. It was it, it was horrible. And I was like, this time around, I'm going to the ER. Mm -hmm. So when the paramedics came and they checked me and the cop was there and my face actually blew up because I hit the steering wheel like and Wait, did you hit the steering wheel or did you hit the steering wheel? Oh no! I it was I didn't intentionally. <laughs> Same question, Papa. Don't put that in the air, but um, did you hit the steering wheel or did you hit the steering? Wheel? Yeah, that's a good question to ask an actress because you never really right, know. Right. You know? Yeah. No, it, I I wouldn't have chosen to hit the steering okay, wheel okay. myself okay um even it was if it was for acting like i didn't i did they didn't hit me and i went oh shit i need i didn't do that <laughs> i really did hit the steering wheel during impact I'll tell you why uh, so me and my friend we were parked on uh the corner of roscoe and van nuys just chit chatting and then from my side, I was driving. From my side, I saw a truck, and he wouldn't step on the brakes. And I go, I think we're going to get rear-ended. <clears throat> the truck decided to move to the left. And we were like, okay, fine. And then he hit my side mirror. Pok, just like that. And I looked, whoa. And that was it, right? And my friend goes, aren't we going to chase him? Because he made the left on Van Nuys. And I go, yeah, we're going to chase him. So we chased him. <clears throat> and we ended up parked at the Walmart across to get information, right? My friend went down because I couldn't open the door. For some reason, Minerva, I couldn't open the door. But he was able to go down. When I went down through his side and saw what happened to my door, it was like scraped. And the door and the metal just was gone. Yeah, that's probably why your door didn't open. Right? Yeah. Oh, I took it up 10 notches. It's like... <laughs> that was like therapy right there. Yeah. Well, you kind of... You don't know. You, you know? don't know. You don't, you don't really know. know. Mm -hmm. um, Cause like what happened to me back in... In 2013. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just didn't... Cause I was just being really nice. Yep. This time around, the paramedics was like, oh, just take a couple Advils, go home and take a rest. I was like, no, no. take me to Cedar Sinai right now. <laughs> I was like, mm -mm, no. Wow. But you know, it, it's, nice, it's nice to be able to know what you can do within, within the boundaries of what's allowed. Right. And just run away with it. I'm, I'm looking at you smiling again and doing all of these things and I can't help but go back to the past. And also know that you do, you write comedy. You do comedy. I do comedy, but... Uh, do you write comedy? I write comedy <clears throat> when I have to. <laughs> but you do comedy, right? I do comedy. Like, that's kind of how I... I guess I have a comedic cope? voice. Are you sure you have a comedic vo <laughs> voice or is that how you cope? It's it's how I cope, yeah. You know, and I I I like laugh. I like laughing, um, especially with my you know Cebuana friends. You know how yeah. like funny we oh, are. Yeah. yeah. Um, so loud, loud and funny. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like like you own like yeah if sabi ko nga and uh, again to my Cebuana friends, you'll know the Cebuanas are at the bar because they think they own the bar. With regard to how loud they yeah. they can be, right? Oh my God! But but looking at you and hearing your stories, how are you able to channel the the trials, everything that happened in the past? 
how are you able to turn them into gold in terms of making people smile? Because that's a generous thing to do. You could have gone the route of being the victim because you were. You, know, you could have gone the route of being, look at me, it's all about me, blah, blah, blah. And then to solicit sympathy, but you choose to make other people smile. Tapos you're reaching out but to women and kids in the Philippines. You're doing all these things. How? Where is it coming from? And why is it coming from there? I think, you know, when it's the maternal instinct, again, um, I want for my, uh, to speak for myself, like, I don't like feeling sad all the time. I like feeling inspired. Like, you know, I like, I like being happy and excited right. and, you know, so, um, I always, when something not ideal happens or there's a, you know, like what is, um, there's a couple of questions I ask myself, like, what's the lesson here? What do I need Ooh, to nice. learn? Mm -hmm in this situation and also um how can i overcome the negativity yes and and always i i'm i'm you know i i dated this guy who called me pollyanna um, why because <laughs> i always find the silver lining in you know bad situations or bad circumstances i always find the silver lining and i think that's a um, survival skill that I yeah. learned from a very Growing young up, yeah. age. Yeah. yeah. So, and it doesn't behoove anybody to be sad or to be angry or to, you know, we already are, mm. you know, and, and if you're in a negative state, if you feel bad, you're just, it's just going to, it's like a spiral down. You're just going to keep on feeling bad. Right. But, um, if you share your story to other people and other people like, they're like, oh, you know, like there's magic and healing that happens when you tell your story and then the other person listens to you and sympathizes with you. Or at least like they, they're like, oh, that happened to me too. Or I know somebody that, 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 that happened too. Like what you're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, um, and and also like as a Filipino person, we always find the silver lining, and oh, we diba? always find whatever's funny right? in any tr situation. We always find what's funny, and I think that that quality is so very special, and I'm so proud to be Filipino for that quality yeah. alone. Yeah, we're like. You know, like we survived typhoons, literally. Like yes. there's a typhoon and happening even, right and, now. And even making fun of, oh my God, speaking of that, there was a typhoon right now, uh, Ulysses, right? Or whatever it's called. Oh what a crazy uh, name. I saw, um, I saw a video of guys and the flood was up to here. They had this kind of table floating with beer and food. Right? And they were pushing <laughs> it around, floating it to the other side, drinking a beer, floating it back. And I'm like, wow, only yeah. in the Philippines. Right? Yes. You know? Um, and I, I love that. I, I think, you know, that's... And I'm proud to be Filipino because of that. And, and also, um, you know, like how we are so animated. Yeah. Um, and I think that the physical comedy is a big thing and it's corny a lot of the times but who cares we like it right right as far as it makes us happy what's next for you um oh god i i'm doing like i said earlier i'm doing a lot more filmmaking um i i just finished a short film it's actually a pilot um that Ooh, fingers crossed yeah, that I wrote and produced that I'm also starring in. Um, and it's autobiographical. It's about a particular chapter in my life. Because um, I do a lot of my filmmaking, my storytelling, my acting as a form of healing. Of course. Um, yeah, and you know, like music. I, yeah. I'm i not a musician. Oh, well, I do. I. I sing a little bit, and but but I'm such a musical person. I write songs. I write poetry. Oh, nice. Um, 
I think they're all they're all interconnected. Tied up. They're all yeah. they're all intertwined. Um, so what part of your life is this taken from? Which part? This this pilot this series. Um, it's called Shevolution, um, and it's the story of a recovering alcoholic and drug addict who. Oh, that part of your life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> who marries another alcoholic drug addict who has bipolar disorder. Oh, could it get any worse? It's <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm a girl who loves trouble. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that was taken from an aspect of my life. Um, I was married to a recurring alcoholic drug addict who has bipolar disorder and schizoaffective um, he was great for a couple of years, and then his mental illness came back, wow. and he relapsed. He's in jail right now. I told you I'm very like honest mm, about yeah. everything. I'm was totally there abuse? Transparent. Did it did it lead to abuse? Yes, it did. Like and physical abuse? Yes. The reason why I'm asking, um, someone close to my family, uh, just this week, right? I'm dealing with that because there was mm-hmm. physical abuse yeah. with one of uh, one of my siblings in the past that I did not know about. Right. One of my sisters, and um, I'm gonna get to the bottom of it because because uh, only to find out that the partner has bipolar tendencies. Yeah. So, <clears throat> if you're watching this, yeah, um, you know, it's it's hard. It's no? I'm sorry thing. to hear that for you. Um. You know, it's okay. And and, okay. and like I said, I create art because personally, it's my healing process. Yeah. That's what I know how to do, you know. And I also love getting my artists, friends together um, and making something out of this story. And, and, and this situation is very universal. Yep. You know, it happens to a lot um, of people. And it, there's a lot of shame in, involved in being a domestic violence survivor. And so my, my goal in making this film was to, you know, hopefully I can help, help dispel that shame. God bless you. Because, the, you know, we cannot live in shame and fear. Yes. Like I was, you know, I was talking to people while I was making this or telling them I was going to make this, that I was writing this project. People would be like, aren't you afraid that he's going to come at you? Or, or you know, aren't you afraid? I was like, that's exactly the reason yep. why I'm making it is because... I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be afraid. And I want other people, may you be a a woman or a man experiencing similar situations that there is, you don't have to be afraid. I agree. You know, you got to tell your truth, no matter how shameful it is or, or, and, and get into the process of healing because we're here in this earth to have fun to enjoy life, yep. to be happy. And if there are things that are keeping you from that, I've seen so many people taken out by alcoholism, drug addiction, because they have these secrets that they, you know, that they, they're so ashamed of to, to tell. And those, you know, there's this cliche, but I think that it's really true. You're only as sick as your secrets. Ooh. So... Inkanda. You know, I think I, that's why transparency is very important. Yeah, like me. your vulnerability could actually actually brings out the best in you because the more vulnerable you are, the more you allow other people to help you heal. Actually, because you can't do it alone. Right, and then you're helping them, and they help yes, you. Yes. It's like this, you know, this. Um, we're helping one another, and that's what we're here for. In order, because we're all just wanting, yeah, uh, you know, a good life. Like they were comfortable and happy, and you know, that's that's what most people want, right? So that's you know, that's why it's important for me to to make this movie and um, ready to. We just got finished, like 
Um, when I when I make a project, I'm very super particular. So it um, takes time. It takes time for me. Like I, you know, I have to have the best cinematographer, the best director for the project. The you know, like the best actors. Like I take my time. Speaking of actor, you acted in it, right? What character did you portray? Did you portray? I portrayed me. <laughs> oh my god. And oh. it's part of the method acting thing too. Like I, you, know, you were okay going back to that. It was hard, but I knew it's part of my process. Because you, because you can choose not to it. Right? You could, you could play support. You could, but to actually jump into it again. Yeah, wow. um, because um, there, there. Jessica Hagedorn is one of my mentors. Um, she's actually, you know, very instrumental in helping me become a writer and I worked with her because I was in dog eaters and we became barcadas and we drank together and all that so um and Jessica Hagedorn she's a novelist now but back in the 70s and the 80s she did performance art a yes. lot when performance art was a thing yeah and so she did a lot of one person shows one woman shows and she was the only Filipina that did that at that time like monologuing and yeah and she played all sorts of characters yeah. like you know, like, she was definitely my role model for what I do. Um, and and um, so I was writing, I was writing a play about Filipino immigrants, actually, called Stateside Girls. And we were talking, and, and she... And and I was like maybe you know maybe I won't I won't play a part in this I'll just be the writer and right. see how the actors interpret the the role and stuff like that, and she was always like oh it's best if you always play it mm -hmm. yourself, because you know what the story is, you know it more than anybody else can true. know it. That's true. So yeah, so, so that's, that's what why led you to. It's can, easier that way too. <laughs> look at you, huh? The way you the way you're saying it, it's easier that way too. It's in my head I'm like it's easier if it if it did not happen in real life. But in this case, you're playing someone like you that kind of actually I don't know what the plot is, but based on what you're saying, similar or in parallel to what happened to you in real life. So that's the oh my um God. You know, it it was hard yeah. because I had to relive moments that are very difficult. First, to... you had to write those moments. Yeah. The lines, the abuse that came in, based. Oh yeah. The, the the writing was not hard because I just had to write what happened. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, I didn't have to make anything up. Correct. And so that was fast. I wrote it in four days. Like. It was really sort of easy. Right. Um, the hard part was, you know, the the making of it because, like, you have to do it a couple of takes and you're like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go back to this place. I don't, you know, it's so much emotional labor. It's so much. And, but I just told myself, you know, like, you got to do this. You got to do this. Just live through it do it and you know you're gonna like help a lot yeah. of people you're gonna open doors for people to tell their own stories too you know and um and this is this is like my mission in life basically is to help other people um be able to tell theirs and i had a a very proud moment a very defining moment for me was actually mentoring these um, labor trafficking survivors from the Philippines. We have that? A ton. Like labor trafficking is, is crazy okay. in, in wow. the Philippines. You know? you know how like they, people always want to work abroad because yes. of the money and to support their families back home, right? So, so they would pay? They would pay agencies, yes. you know, a lot of money. Like they have to borrow money from their relatives to, oh, wow. you know, um, and then they, and then they would come to, for instance, the States, they would be like, oh, uh, do you come to LA and you would be, uh, you would, 
you would work in like an engineer perhaps or, or whatever no not like that yeah well th these particular this particular women that i worked with not only women but a couple men too um they were brought here to the states they um to work in a bakery owned by a filipino woman okay um so they had to like you know pay their agencies lay yeah. their families back home do the whole you know migrant worker thing and then they came here and they didn't have any days off they didn't have breaks wow. they were um i'm not sure about this but i think they were paid less than minimum wage or at least they were not paid what they right. said they were going to get paid and they came here and they couldn't they didn't have any friends or family they didn't know anybody they didn't have anybody to passports talk to. were taken passports were taken they lived you know they were asked to do other things like they they really enslaved them essentially like wow. this is modern day slavery and it wow. happens a lot um and so there's uh there's a couple agencies there's uh gabriella Los Angeles, which is a Filipino women's organization that I am very active in, um, that helped them, that brought them to, uh, you know, some lawyers in Asian Pacific justice, whatever, um, some some okay. agency, some um, law law firm, law firm, mm -hmm. um, and they eventually got out. Of that situation and they were given um like working visas nice no yeah and now they work for other bakeries legitimate around, legit, le talaga. legit you know following labor laws they're paid very decently you know they should now they're they they're doing what they came here to do um so essentially i they asked me gabriella asked me to do like a cultural night for them and and I did writing workshops with the actual survivors where um, I had them tell their stories, you know, write their stories and what exactly happened. And, right. and so we met every week for a couple months and they just, it was like a cry fest, dude. Like, it was like a cry fest. Like they were just so happy to be able to tell their stories. And they, um, a lot of them couldn't even articulate in, in English. In English, yeah. So I asked them to write it in Tagalog because I, I understand Tagalog very well. And, and um, yeah, no, everybody spoke Tagalog. So, and, and they didn't, they were like, and I asked them to perform it themselves. So it was, I told them that if you would rather, these aren't actors, they're very shy, you know, right. that if it's, if you're more comfortable saying it, in Tagalog, Go it's ahead, okay. Yeah. Like you know, this is this is your, um, this is your work. This is your storytelling. Oh, wow. And so <laughs> we did. We had this show at the um, Pasadena Playhouse, like the little theater. Mm -hmm. um, and we did it at a night where there was a show on the main stage that Al Pacino and Judith Light were performing it performing in so there were a lot of hollywood people that came through like the lobby and stuff and we had this little filipino cultural uh -huh. show with actual you know but i that was a, such a great metaphor for my life yes my mission in life i came yes. you know i thought that the goal of my life was for glitz and glam was to do glitz and glam uh -huh. but i was in the little theater with my filipino peeps and yes. i couldn't be happier you know, so I was like, this is it. I create art so I can help people heal themselves and they can help me heal too. And we can all, you know, um, and that's, you know, I don't, I don't care to be famous really, you know, I mean, I care to have a living as an actor in Hollywood because you know, that's what, how I make money. Yeah. So, you know, put me in a bathing suit, I'll wear a bathing suit. Like, you know what I mean? And like, the, you want me to have blonde hair? I'll have blonde hair. I have no problem with that. Like, I'll do what I need to do in order to make a living. Yeah. But my real passion is creating art for social change. So there you go. 
Ladies and gentlemen, wow. Minerva Veer. Big round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> Saludo, wow.